Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're super happy to have you all here. I see lots of people still coming in, so welcome and good afternoon. We're going to talk about cannabis programs at the University of Vermont today. We're going to pack in a lot of information into a half hour, so please get your questions ready. As I put into the chat box, we will be recording this session, and please do put your questions throughout the presentation in the chat box. I'll do my best to monitor those and check in with Dr. McHenry about those questions. So we're going to go over quick introductions. We're going to talk about the two cannabis programs at the University of Vermont, the certificate programs, and what is the difference of those two programs. We're going to talk about evidence-based cannabis education and how important that is and, and really what differentiates our program from other programs. Types of careers and different roles that we've seen um, come into the program. So just thinking about if, if some of those positions um, are what you are doing or what you're aspiring to do, this program, either of these programs could be right for you. And we're going to go over those course logistics because we have both of our courses, our cannabis science and medicine in plant biology starting very soon. So we'll get those on your calendar as well. And of course, plenty of time for your questions. So good afternoon. My name is Nicola Willie I. Fenton. I am in our, our professional and continuing education department at the University of Vermont, helping to guide our conversation today. And we're so happy to have Dr. McHenry, Monique McHenry, in our studio today. Um, and Monique teaches both of the programs. She leads the cannabis plant biology and the cannabis science and medicine in partnership with the Department of Pharmacology and as well as the College of Agricultural and Life Sciences. And Monique has an extensive extensive background as a botanist, and she's been doing a lot of research in cannabis and has helped to start a few institutes as well and um, some research enterprises in the Case Institute. So Monique, thank you so much for being with us today. Okay, so we got a lot to cover. So let's first talk about, um, we have two courses, as I mentioned, Cannabis Science and Medicine out of the Larner College of Medicine, and then our Cannabis Plant Biology, which is in partnership with our College of Agricultural and Life Sciences. So we're gonna start with Cannabis and Science and Medicine. Dr. McHenry, give us an overview. What is the intention of Science and Medicine? We'll do the same for Plant Biology. Great. So the intention of science and medicine is to provide an evidence-based education that um, medical professionals or just members of the community can then help, you know, if, if it's in educating their patients or educating each other in the potential risks and benefits of using cannabis therapeutically. And then one of the things that I think is unique in, in thinking about the two programs are where some of the content overlaps and then the differentiation between the two programs. So walk us through the different modules in our science and medicine course. Great, so the science and medicine course starts with um, an introduction on the history of the law and policy, as well as the business of cannabis science. Um, and the plant biology uh, program starts off the same way. And then in the science and medicine program, we go into basic biology. And in science and medicine, we're focused on you know, um, the human body. And we do do a little bit of the biology of the plant, as well as the plant chemicals and how they're produced. And then we just take a deep dive right into pharmacology. Um, we touch on production safety as well in, in science and medicine. And then after pharmacology, we move into our clinical modules. And our clinical modules cover uh, the parts of cannabis science that have evidence-based, basically, uh, publications in peer-reviewed journals. So we cover pain and the endocrine system, um, as well as motor disorders. We don't cover uh, areas where you just have anecdotal evidence about cannabis used therapeutically. And to keep it balanced, we always talk about the potential benefits as well as adverse events. And what are the student projects typically in cannabis science and medicine? Oh, right. Thanks, Nicole. I forgot about that part of the module. You know, and, and the students do seem to think that is where they learn the most. And uh, a lot of times it's their favorite part. So after they've had set, uh, six weeks of learning, then the last week we ask them to do their own project. And we guide them through the process of finding a project that's evidence-based in their area of interest. 
So in science and medicine, where we tend to have a lot of medical professionals, um, sometimes we have professionals who are actually doing active research in the cannabis uh, science field. So they'll present on their active research. We have others who are looking to develop a research project. Um, and so myself and the instructor, Linda, uh, Dr. Linda Klumpers, help guide them through the process of that. And then we have others who, who might be in the law or business sector. And so we welcome them to do projects on uh, policy, for example, or coming up with a science or education evidence-based business plan. So really across the board, uh, their presentations, we provide them a platform where they can basically make a presentation and record audio, written, or even video comments on it. And then we put it out there for all, the, all of their peers to review it, as well as the faculty. And um, it really creates this, this cohesiveness among the cohort. Um, and it's, it's a fun project. And, and speaking of that, I was just thinking about the cohort. Um, what is the typical limit? I know that we have a limit in our enrollments. So what is the typical right. limit? And then how, how do you build the, the cohort in an online class as well? So the limit is, is 35 students. Um, and we, we usually come pretty close to reaching that limit, if not um, having a wait list. And we do that because uh, to be able to give everyone enough individual attention, that, that really is the maximum number that we can handle with myself and the instructor, Dr. Linda Klumpers. And then to build the cohort, um, we encourage participation in a discussion board. So we give prompts and questions, um, and then students will, will, will post, and they will use evidence-based um, facts that they, you know, form their post about, and then students comment. And so from the get-go, you know, we, we are utilizing all the online tools, which is, includes the discussion board, to, to really get student engagement going. And I think every cohort at the end um, ends up with some kind of social media um, page connection that they continue to use after the program mm, as a lot. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, and the other thing I was thinking about too is you have a lot of guest speakers that come in, in in both plant biology and science and medicine. Can you give us a little teaser as to some of the topics and some of the, the kinds of folks that come in to science and medicine? Great. So, um, you know, we do update the, the modules as frequently as we can, but this is such an ever-changing field that we, you know, have, add these additional speakers in, in topics that we might not be covering or in topics that we, the students have mentioned throughout the course. So sometimes we have an extra guest speaker. The topics we usually always have are, um, we, have a, we have guest speakers in modes of administration, usually a physician scientist, and then Dr. Clumpers. And during this, the students will, will ask the questions they have that might not have been covered. Um, and we invite both programs to participate in them. So every program has one of these guest speakers live, and you know, don't worry, everything can be done at a different time because this is fully online. So we do have a synchronous live session every other week, but since we have two programs, basically every week you're invited to come to one of these you know, live seminars with a guest speaker. And in the plant biology section, um, we have agronomists who are actively working in the field um, of growing either uh, growing cannabis and then in the science and medicine like I said we have modes of administration we usually bring in somebody doing extraction um, as well as business uh, CEOs or um, you know HR representatives to talk about personnel and what it takes to get a job in the cannabis industry or how, how you manage employees best um, product development so those are a lot of the topics that we have. Um, we usually bring in some of the faculty too from UVM to talk more about cannabis chemistry or answer questions about cannabis pharmacology that you know might not have been answered in the modules too. Awesome. Yeah. Very dynamic, it sounds like too. So, um, oh Claire, we have a question from Claire as well. Is there a clinical aspect such as working in a dispensary as an educator? Is there, a, was the question a clinical aspect? Can you repeat that? Sorry, Nicole. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, Claire, I'm wondering, a little clarification looks like she's typing as well. Um, 
maybe let's let's pause. Let's get, let Claire um, clarify and give us a little bit more information. And we'll come back to that. So Claire, we'll give you a little more time to add a little more information. Um, and so let's jump over to um, plant biology. So we've been diving deeper into science and medicine. You've heard Dr. McHenry kind of reference some of the opportunities in both courses. But w w tell us more about cannabis plant biology. So in plant biology, again, we're using that evidence-based science, um, and we've designed this course to basically provide a learning experience for, for people interested in cannabis science. So in this particular course, we cover more about the plant itself, you know, um, so basically from seed to sale. So we cover, you know, the factors that can influence growing the plant. Um, we have basic plant biology, where we talk about the name of the plant, ecology and evolution of this particular species. Um, of course, we focus a lot on those plant chemicals. And then we talk a lot about um, harvest. So if you're growing a large amount, um, an industrial size, we bring in our experts from UVM who have been growing hemp for a long time now, um, originally under a DEA scheduled license. And um, we talk about then what happens after harvest, all the factors that can influence those chemicals, um, we're drying and storage, and we present some of our research as well as research that's now been published on that. And um, then we do touch on cannabis and humans. We have a whole module dedicated to it where we give basic pharmacology of certain chemicals, you know, what, what happens when you ingest THC or CBD. Um, we talk about metabolism, excretion of it. And uh, then we have those student projects again. And uh, again, it's extremely broad. Um, it's the same format where we give you a platform so you can present online um, you, you know, with a presentation and your comments and your peers can, can comment on it as well. So you get a, you know, a lot of feedback from both the instructors as well as your colleagues. And um, then we include this career development module because a lot of people who enter the plant biology program are interested in this industry. So if they're interested and they're looking how to, you know, expand their farm or um, their, their laboratory, uh, we provide a career development aspect to the course as well. Awesome. Great. Thank you very much for that overview. And, and we do have a little bit of a clarification from Claire. Claire, thank you so much for adding more information. It sounds like, and I'm hoping I'm, I'm paraphrasing this correctly, but Claire's wondering, is there a clinical aspect that, that is maybe part of a module or maybe a speaker that might come in that gives um, more insight to the experience as um, working in a dispensary? So we don't bring in... Um somebody who's who's actually seeing uh, clients, you know, whether it's patients or customers in a dispensary. Uh, we bring in, you know, people who might be hiring for that position. Um, and so, yeah, I think to answer the question, we don't have, you know, I think they're called bud tenders, right? That's the common phrase used. We don't really cater towards um, that because we're, we're talking more about the science of it and the business we're bringing in is informing the science. It's not necessarily um, informing the retail aspect of it, Claire. So I hope that helps answer your question. Does the science go, and, and maybe this is a little bit more clarity with Claire too, does the science, um, the evidence-based science that you're presenting go into some of the common methods of utilizing cannabis and the effects on, on the body. It's looking like she's kind of differentiating between vaping versus smoking versus edibles. Is there any information that is to, from a scientific perspective, what it does to the body? Yes. So um, those are what we would consider our modes of administration, right? How you're taking, consuming the cannabis, whether it's inhalation or intravenous. Um, and, and that's in our basic pharmacology section. So we definitely address um, with the information we have that's evidence-based, right? So there's not a lot of evidence-based information out there about transdermal. You know, there's a lot of anecdotal evidence that companies, you know, claim it does X, Y, and Z. And, um, you know, we will very honestly say either that's not true or there's nothing, you know, in the science literature that suggests that. So we're not going to give anyone, you know, false information because we're looking at stuff that 
that is tried and true. Well, we do cover all the modes of administration, which includes intravenous, inhalation, sublingual, transdermal, and um, oral. Awesome. Great. Thank you. And, and Claire, thank you for continuing to help us guide um, through your questioning. So let's, I'm going to keep going for just a minute and I'll come back to some of the other questions because we also have something kind of exciting. I think it's super exciting to share as well. So that we added um, in the fall um, a new component, not a whole module, but some new information and new presentations because um, there is more evidence uh, based research that's coming out related to psilocybin. So can you share why we're incorporating this into the programs and, and are we incorporating into both as well? So yes, we are incorporating it into both. Um, currently, we don't have a separate module. We've just incorporated it into our modules and we have a couple presentations. Why are we including psilocybin? Um, because this seems to be a natural fit for other, you know, natural based or derived um, drugs that are being currently used. And we had an ask from students. Um, it, there seems to be a connection uh, between people interested in the industry cannabis and people interested in psilocybin. A lot of the same chemists, a lot of the same laboratories are doing both. And psilocybin specifically is now becoming um, an interesting topic as far as policy goes, because you have some states, um, well, one state and then other, I guess, areas like cities or towns that are uh, requesting rules to be written about the therapeutic use of psilocybin. So because we do get a lot of medical professionals and we get a lot of chemists and people working in the cannabis industry, we wanted to uh, provide the education for psilocybin as well as cannabis um, and just be able to present the evidence-based facts. Additionally, you know, there's upcoming publications that talk about psilocybin. So the time is right for us to be able to um, present, you know, what, what psilocybin does when it enters the human body, uh, how mushrooms produce psilocybin, you know, what, what affects the concentrations of psilocybin in mushrooms. So all of the same questions we've investigated with cannabis um, are now starting to become published in psilocybin. So it's, it's time to help educate the public on this. Awesome. I'm really excited to see that come to fruition. So thank you, Monique. Um, and we've talked a lot about evidence-based cannabis education. And, and so I don't know that we need to go into more detail un unless there's something else you wanted to say on this, Dr. McHenry. No, I mean, I think, I think we talked about it a lot. You know, it's, it's you know, anecdotal, traditional um, intuition. Those, all of those methodologies have their place, um, but we just don't use them in our class. And so that's, we just stick to the facts. Um, and that's why as a university we can teach this because we're not teaching anything that hasn't been um, through rigorous scientific processes. Great, awesome, thank you. And I see that Evan, that you wanted to raise your hand. If you wanna put your question in the chat box, that would be really helpful. Um, and then I can ask Dr. McHenry that. So let's let's go back to a couple of questions here for a moment as well. Um, Mo has said, I'm a graduate of the course in 2020 and highly recommend to others. Thank you for sharing that information. Is there a way to access course content as a refresher given how the field continues to evolve? Oh, great question. Oh, hi, Mo, by the way. Um, and, you know, I don't know if that's a great question for me. That is a great question, Mo. Um, perhaps we should ask some of our IT experts what that might look like. Um, we do extend so the information beyond the period of the class. So the classes are seven or eight weeks, depending on what program you're on. You usually have access you know, a few days to a week before, depending on what program you're on. And then we extend it a few months later, but then we end up using that Blackboard platform for the next cohort. So we do stop access before the course begins again. So um, yeah, Mo, that's a great question. We can try to yeah. see, talk to our IT folks to see if there's a way to provide the information again as a refresher. All the slides are downloadable as PDF formats. Um, so, you know, students do have access to that in, 
indefinitely if they choose to download it. Um, but, but yeah, um, as far as the updates we've added since alums have taken the program, you know, that, that could be a nice addition for us to do. Yeah, that's a great question, too, and something for us to think about. We'll take that back to our team and, and noodle that a little bit. Um, so we have another question as well from Chanel that says, for plant biology track, it has been a while since I've taken a college biology course. Do you recommend taking any prerequisite classes? And we do have a little bit of information on an upcoming slide, but Monique, if you want to share what are some of the prereqs. So there are prereqs, um, and, and, you know, I'm a big fan of saying, you can sign up for everything. I, I would override your prereqs as long as you are willing to put the time in to get to the required baseline information. So, you know, it might mean that you need to um, check out from the library a basic pharmacology book. Um, we don't really have the bandwidth to help you get up to speed, but um, we would certainly welcome you into the class and you would just know, okay, you know, especially in science and medicine, you, you need to have a basic pharmacology baseline. Um, you need to understand chemistry. Uh, but, you know, if you don't feel like you might be up to speed in that, I think you could remedy that because uh, we, we do have a diverse group of students that join. You know, we have, we have some students who would be current medical students. So those students would be most up to date and all the basic things because they're actively in school. Their brains are just wired for that right now. Um, but then we have physicians who haven't taken a class in 40 years and um, or business people or, or politicians and they do fine too. You just have to put the effort in to get out what you want to get out of the course. Great point. Thank you. And that's a great question. We'll, we'll touch on that a little bit later too. Andy asked, do you cover methods of determining variety and dose of cannabis for individuals? Do we cover methods for um, determining variety and what was the second part? Sorry, Nicole. Yeah, that's okay. I probably talked too fast. Dose of cannabis for individuals. Um, so, you know, again, we talk in our modes of administration, we talk about dosages. Um, we give the information we have. Um, variety of cannabis, we talk about a lot. And that's in the plant biology sections where we're talking about the naming of the species itself. And then, um, you know, I guess I should say the failed naming of these strains or what should be called varieties. Um, and we talk about some of the issues that we, we've learned about them and mostly it's the chemical uh, composition is inconsistent uh, within and among varieties. So we, we won't focus on, you know, this particular variety, say purple kush provides these therapeutic benefits because we don't see that that's actually um, scientifically sound. Got it. Yeah, great question, and thank you for that. I'm going to, um, Evan, hang on one second. We're going to get to your question in just a minute. Thank you for asking it. And Jane, thank you also for sharing. And, and this list continues to evolve. And so Jane has suggested adding end-of-life care um, as a role and, and wonderful connection over to our um, end-of-life care, our end-of-life doula certificate program as well. So I think I think really the point here is, and Monique has referenced a couple different examples. There's a lot of different roles, a lot of different backgrounds that join our programs. Um, and one of the things that then in this, you know, a little bit pertains to what Evan just wrote, interested in entering the industry. And so we're going to pause for just a second and play this video. So don't go anywhere. We're going to come right back. And, and Dr. McHenry and I are just going to turn off our cameras real quick so we can show the video full screen. But I wanted you to hear from somebody in the industry. And Kyle, is a chief marketing officer. He comes from pharmaceutical marketing and branding, and he is a chief marketing officer of a company called Holistic Industries. And they are um, a vertical integration in, in, in several states, I think three or four states at this point, and continue to grow as well. And we really asked him, as somebody working in the industry and hiring people in the industry, what kind of education do you think um, it is compelling when looking at hiring and looking at people um, entering into the industry. So stay with us. We're Monique and I will be right back. We're going to play this video uh, full screen for you, and then we'll continue this conversation and continue answering your questions. The cannabis industry 
little stories of things of what works and what doesn't. Like that would be true whether we're talking about in the agricultural and plants environment, it's based on data, not what some legacy grower thinks is the best thing to do. Marketing or media are data business decisions. Finance business decisions. Clinical claims are data and evidence-based decisions. So when we have a pile of resumes coming in, which we do, we're looking for people who have a passion for cannabis and have, are willing to take the time to complete the work at a credible institution to get this kind of education. That, that would stand out for us. So thank you for sharing that video with us um, as well. Just, I think it's important to see that employers are recognizing the value of the evidence-based education. Um, and many of the folks that, that take our, the students that take our courses are, are thinking of getting into the industry and, and how this kind of learning opportunity could leverage um, to get to the top of that resume and that application pile. Um, so here's a few logistics. So I just wanted to go over these real quick and then we'll end with your questions as well. Um, Science and Medicine starts March 14th and that runs seven weeks. Um, and, and as Dr. McHenry mentioned, there are some requirements and prerequisites, but if it's been a while since you've taken a science uh, college class, um, reach out to us and, and please communicate with us and, and email and that we'll get that over to Dr. McHenry um, to consider your certain circumstance. Um, and the cost is listed there. We also have a discount for UVM affiliates as well. So please do share with us if you are affiliated with the University of Vermont. Um, plant biology starts August, um, August. I'm kind of wishing it was August, March 7th, um, and that runs eight weeks. So it's the week before uh, science and medicine starts. And, and I know we had this question as well, Dr. McHenry. I think, um, I think it was Evan that was asking this, which program should I select? And Evan is a chemist um, interested in entering the industry. And we get that question a lot. Which one should I start with if I'm interested in both? Is there a sequence that makes sense? Or from a chemistry background, where would you direct Kevin? Great. Well, you know, typically I answer that question by saying start with the plant biology because you'll get a brief introduction to the pharmacology as well as, um, you know, how the human body and cannabis interacts. And you get, you know, a much more robust uh, learning experience about, um, you know, the, the, the plant biology aspect of it um, and the chemicals and what affects the chemicals in the plants. And I say, and if you are interested in learning more about, you know, the different clinical modules, uh, we have those online. But the truth is right now we actually don't have those individual clinical modules online. Um, they will be updated soon. Um, they're not online right now. So, but I think I would still, for a chemist, recommend starting with the plant biology program for the reason that we, you know, we talk a lot more um, extensively about uh, the chemicals in the plant and uh, what happens after that plant is harvested to those chemicals in different environments. Um, and you would get a great uh, taste of what the science and medicine program entails by doing that because you could attend their their guest speaker lectures every other week. So you'd be attending three guest speaker lectures for the science and medicine program. And then you could decide if that's something you wanted to do too, or you could wait for our online modules, um, our online clinical modules to be back updated. Great. Thank you. That was a great question as well. And just thinking too, in terms of timing, these two courses are offered two times a year. So we're offering them in March, as we've mentioned, March 7th and March 14th. And then we usually offer them in October as well. So that gives you an opportunity to sequence those two courses if you're interested in taking both of them. Um, Dr. McKinnon, my last question, it looks like questions are slowing down. So if there is something else you wanted to ask, please do, because we're going to wrap up here in just a minute. Um, and if you have, as I put up on the screen here, so if you have any follow-up questions, 
please do email us at learn at uvm.edu or give us a call. There are still people on the other end, um, even though many of us work remote as well. Um, be happy to answer any questions and get questions over to Dr. McHenry as well. So what I see Maria's um, typing a question, but in the interim of seeing that question, Dr. McHenry, what got you so interested in this, um, in this industry? What, as a botanist, it makes a lot of sense, but what piqued your curiosity and why do you continue to want to teach and, and to work in the cannabis industry? Well, you know, obviously I was, as a botanist, you know, this was a extremely interesting plant. And, um, you know, my background is actually in evolutionary biology and we don't know a lot about cannabis, you know, in that stance, its evolution, its ecology. And, um, and then this field just keeps getting so exciting because, you have all this new development that um, it, it's, it's hard to leave it. But the reason why I became interested in educating is because of my interest in you know, this, this organism as a plant, I realized the lack of uh, available educational materials that were out there. You know, and this is what, like seven years ago, Nicole, we've been doing this for so long now, that I felt there was a huge need. You know, and there, there seemed to be a huge need in the medical community for information. And um, then when the hemp bill was, was uh, passed in 2018, there became a huge need in the agricultural sector for educational information. And so we developed the plant biology one. Um, but yeah, we just, I felt, you know, as a plant biologist, it was interesting. And as an educator, there was, there was a need. Yeah, and we're so thankful that you did. Thank you so much for continuing to build course content that is so relevant as well. So our last question will end with Maria. Can either course be audited, Monique? Um, I, I think so. We I think we have had people audit. Um, maybe I should explain just a teeny bit about how this works, right? So when you're taking a professional certificate at UVM, you're not a matriculating student. Um, so you're welcome to take them, at, you know, the, the program and, and not get a grade, which would essentially be auditing it. Um, but in order to earn the professional certificate, uh, you have to earn a 70%. So you get graded just like you would in, in a regular um, graduate or undergraduate class here. And as long as your grade totals 70% uh, or higher, you basically get a pass and you earn a professional certificate. So in order to earn a professional certificate, I don't think you could audit it, but you'd be welcome to participate at, you know, in the cohort and have access to all the material. Great. That's a great question. I don't think we've had that one before. So thank you for asking that, um, Maria, as well. So we're going to wrap up. We're a couple minutes over. So um, wanted to thank you, Monique, as always, for guiding our programs and to helping educate our folks today as to what we mean by cannabis programs at the University of Vermont and the exciting opportunities that people have to take. Um, plant biology starts March 7th. And um, oh, is there a fee for auditing? That's a great question as well from Andy. You know, Nicole, I think I'd have to turf that back to uh the crew over at PACE to help answer that question. I, you know, I don't do the registration, to be honest. So um, I, I would want somebody yep. on that side to help. answer that question. Yeah, you bet. Exactly. So Andy, why don't you shoot us an email? Um, we're at learn at uvm.edu. Um, please send us an email and let's get the answer to that. I just don't want to misspeak. I, I'm not, um, I don't want to tell you the wrong answer at the moment. So um, please do send us an email. We'll get that question answered for you. And if anyone else has any other emails, you can, um, questions, you can email us as well. So thank you, Dr. McHenry. Thank you, everybody and our crew in the studio helping Dr. McHenry today. Uh, we wish all of you good health. Please stay healthy. I know it's challenging out there, and we wish you good health and a wonderful afternoon. Take care. Thanks for having me. Bye.